Today a very simple basic tutorial about the very first DJ transitions every DJ should learn. Hey guys, welcome to the studio. Today it's not all about making music, today it's all about playing music. To be more precise, it's all about DJing, in particular about the very first DJ transitions. You should actually learn the very, very, very basic ones. Last week I did an entire video about beat matching, so if you haven't checked that out, I will link it up there. At the end of the video, you should definitely go and check it out, because everything today is kind of based on it, if you don't know what beat matching is. It's kind of getting both songs to the same tempo and putting them on top of each other to let them play synchronized. And no matter what transition you do, this needs to be the case. Even if you just like pull the cross feather across to the next song, yes, that's also a transition, but the most basic ever, it still makes sense to have them synchronized so that you might switch from the end of the chorus from one song to the beginning of, of the pre-chorus of the other song and if they're synchronized, the people can still dance. If one song has like 120 BPM and you then just pull the cross feather across to a song with 95, you will stop the entire energy on the dance floor. People will stop, look at you, feeling totally weird. So really always have the songs at the same speed, make sure they're synchronized. And then there are a couple of transitions you can do. We will start with the very, 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 very basic one. And that is actually just making one song quieter and the other one louder, slowly but steady. So again, first beat matching, one song in, cueing in the other one. One song, the other song, and now just this one, both together again. So again, this is fundamental. If you're not beat matching, you're not DJing. I mean, that's like the very, very basic first step. But the first transition would be really just like having one song in that everyone is hearing and then slowly but steady pulling this one out and the other one in. It's not the most exciting, it's the first one you should learn. The important thing is, and this is what a lot of people get wrong, they do it way too fast, if you do it really fast. It just doesn't work, you need to do it slowly, at least like 15 seconds long and slowly but steady, taking a little bit of the volume away from one song, adding a little bit of volume from the other song. Really important, don't wear your headphones while doing that, at least not if they're a cue to one of the channels. You need to listen to what everyone else is playing, what is playing to the crowd, and make sure the energy is not missing somewhere. If you pull one track down too fast, the other one too fast in again, or both of them slow, you will have dips in the volume. You want to avoid that. Try to keep the volume like really on one level to make it a seamless transition for at least like 10-15 seconds. If you're really good and your beat matching sits very well, you can do it for 30 seconds. Of course, also depending on the style of music. More underground songs have longer intros and outros. This might be easier for the start because you have a little bit more time. Take your time. Make the transition exactly in between phrases. By the way, the next course kind of will be mixing phrases like because that's something so many DJs get wrong, but that's really something for next week. The one downside of this transition, it's a little boring and you usually have a bass build up because you have usually kicks going on, two kicks at the same time, two kicks maybe playing at different frequencies, they might overlap, they might start phasing or clicking a little. So it's really wise to actually do as a standard transition if you don't know how to get from one song to another the one where you cut the bass. So again, one song playing to the crowd. And then the second one you want to mix in, you start it without any bass in it. And then just slowly fade it in. You can now leave both tracks playing a little bit together and then you start switching the basses. So you turn one up and the other one down.
and then you pull down the track that is now slowly but steady getting to the end just decrease the volume this sounds already a lot better you will have less bass build up especially in a club where it's usually very bass heavy you need to control your bass that's probably the most important you could do the same instead of with the low frequencies, with the mid and high frequencies, or you could just pull down all of the frequencies. If you lower like the low, the mids and the highs, your track is gone, there's nothing playing, and then slowly but steady like turn the knobs and get the sound back in and do the opposite on the other song, getting the, the frequencies out again. That would be like the third very simple transition to just doing it by EQing. Again, be very careful about not losing the energy level. If you take away the bass from one song, make sure to turn up the bass on the other song, just to have like a steady, seamless energy level and not to distract the people dancing on the dance floor. Just with these three types of transitions, I'm sure you can get away playing an entire DJ set as long as it's electronic music. For hip hop, again, you need maybe to start learning scratching, which is a whole nother story and topic for another day. Another simple transition, very close to the one with the queuing, would be to use a filter. The Denon X1800 Prime has like these dedicated filter knobs that are really nice. So just the low frequencies, turn it up, just the high frequencies. So you could do an easy transition just with the filters, so now the top frequencies of this song is playing and the low frequencies of the other one. A lot of possibilities, it's easier because you just have to handle one knob, but not every mixer has a dedicated filter knob. The next step would be actually to include effects, so you could combine one fader in, one out, having the songs beat matched and on top of that maybe a reverb on the song that is slowly but steady fading out just to make it wash out and and like kind of transform into an effect uplifting kind of sound so for that we will put the effects onto channel number two select the reverb push the knob to engage it so the normal loop and now with the reverb Again, without the reverb, be really careful with the facts. A lot of beginners use them way too, way too much. Like it's just distracting, like, especially if you play music, people know if you put too many facts on it, they will be distracted and it, it will like keep people from dancing. So try to be subtle. I think that's really the key as a DJ. I mean, once you're a superstar and you scream into the mic, that's fine. You can do whatever you want, but until then, Keep it all a little down. So again, both songs playing at the same time. And now I will take the bass out of the song that should fade out. Add reverb. And just pull down the fader. By pulling down the fader, let me demonstrate that again. Just with the one channel, reverb on. The reverb fades. This is really nice. Um, the Denon and also the Pioneer mixer, they do that. So you can have even way more seamless transitions by having like a reverb tail on the song that is ending. If you turn the wet dry knob back down, it just stops the reverb. Same for the knob. It just immediately stops it. So by pulling down the fader, you get this nice long tail that just really sounds amazing and is like a subtle nice effect to glue the songs even better together. And then there are way more sneaky effects that you can use. For example, the washout. It's, it's like probably the, the simplest, easiest transition. You don't really even have to beat match it. It also works without beat matching, but again, it's way nicer for the energy on the dance floor. If you beat match, it's basically just like, yeah, what the name says, a washout effect. Kind of delays it and fades it to, to nothing. 
very, very, very simple. And now you could just start the next song. It's not the most seamless, but if you're in a hurry, if you mess up your beat matching, it's like a worst case effect to use. Also, the last tip, check your mixer, because most mixers have um, fader curves. For the line fader and the cross fader, you can set them in a way that whenever you just move a tiny bit the fader, the music will immediately play at full volume. This is really good for, for like scratching because you just open up the fader with a little click. So with the line faders, you got a similar setting. So if I set it to an extreme, the music starts already playing just by opening the fader a tiny bit at full volume. And if we set it to, to a normal setting in the middle, it will be like slowly steady more and more. And the other opposite would be like having like no volume this entire way and just at the very top you get the full song. I mean this is mostly useful for, for people that do scratching and stuff like that. But again that's something for another topic. Next up mixing phrases. Very very underestimated but you need to learn that as a DJ. So many people do that wrong it sounds just horrible. But uh, again next video don't forget to subscribe. If you're interested in that, we'll see us tomorrow back again here in the studio making music again instead of playing music.